This video is an introduction on how to interpret macular scans using the optical coherence tomography. OCT has played an increasing role in how we evaluate the macular area. It has been implemented recently in multiple clinical studies, including the CAT study. Fluorescein geography is still the gold standard. However, OCT can provide us with a non-invasive scan in 5 to 10 microns of resolution, giving us both qualitative and quantitative data. When looking at a macular scan OCT, it's important to come at the nerve fiber layer. The nerve fiber layer is always thicker towards the optic nerve, indicating this is a right eye. Next, you should comment on the foveal contour. The foveal contour can become disrupted secondary to vitreo macular traction or epiretinal membranes or large areas of fluid cystic areas pushing up on the fovea. Next, you want to comment on the posterior hollow surface. If the posterior hollow surface is absent, it may indicate that the patient has developed a posterior vitreous detachment. Then you want to look at the intraretinal layers. You want to look for any areas that are hyperreflective or hyporeflective. Hyperreflective lesions include hard exudates, microaneurysms, or fresh dot hemorrhages. Areas of hypofluorescent includes areas of fluid leakage or cystic cavities. Then you want to look at the four distinct hyperreflective lines. Starting from the inner part of the retina, you have the external lumina membrane, the inner outer center junction line. The cost line and finally retinal pigment epithelium. Brooks membrane is located underneath the RPE, but unless the RPE is elevated secondary to serious pigment epithelial detachments, it's hard to visualize the Brooks membrane. Below that is your choroid. The choroid itself can become thicker secondary to conditions such as centrosurus choroid retinopathy, polyportal choroid vasculopathy, or macular degeneration. The cord can actually become thinner over time too, secondary to atrophy, such as a macular degeneration. Enhanced depth imaging has allowed us to better visualize the chordal structures. When looking at an OCT scan, you can imagine it being similar to an ultrasound. But light is shining into the eyes, hitting the retinal tissues, and depending on the refractive index of each of the tissue, Lays absorbed and then bounce back into the instrument, creating an image. So things that can block the light signal, such as an astrohyalosis, will cause a decrease in the scan. Four areas you want to concentrate on the OCT is actually the hyperreflective lines towards the RPE area. The first thing you should be looking at is actually the inner outer segment junction line, also called the photoreceptor integral line and more recently in literature called the EPIS line or the ellipsoid portion of the outer segments. Next, the line below that is going to be your cost line. Cost line is cone's outer tips line, also may represent a varus membrane and the tight junctions between the retinal pigment epithelium cells. Again, the four hyperreflective structures you want to concentrate on, starting from the outer retina is the retinal pigment epithelium, your next is your cost line or your intermediate line, then your inner outer segment line, also called your EPIS line, and finally your external limiting membrane. What we want to concentrate on is mostly the cost line and your inner segment outer segment junction line. When those two are intact, it indicates the photoreceptors are aligned and the patient should have good visual acuity. Certain conditions can disrupt these two lines, including early toxicity secondary to hydroxychloroquine maculopathy. OCT was first developed by MIT in 1990. In 1986, Carl Zeiss commercialized the OCT by developing the time domain OCT Stratus. Since then, the Stratus has three different upgrades, with the most recent being the Stratus OCT 3, which was used in the CAT study. Special domain OCT was developed later with many players, including Cirrus from Carl Zeiss, Spectralis from Heidelberg. 3D OCT 2000 from Topcon and the OptiV RTV. Each of these instruments has its own bells and whistles, but they all use special domain technology, allowing better resolution and better reliability on scans. 
When looking at OCT scan, you can evaluate the scan either in false color code or black and white. Things that are hyper reflective gives a warmer color such as red and yellow. Things that are minimally reflective and absorbs are black. When looking at the color code or hyper reflective and hypo effective structures in OCT, hyper reflective structures may indicate heart exudates, combo spots, microorganisms, fresh Doppler hemorrhages, trepes, nevuses. Low reflective structures indicate areas of either fluid or cavities. It's not uncommon to see a hyper reflective coordinating vascular membrane adjacent with subretinal fluid or hypo reflective space of leakage, or a microaneurysm as hyperreflective surrounded by a hypo-reflective space from fluid leakage. When looking at OCT macular scans, I like to break up the retinal conditions into four different layers. The vitro-retinal interface, the intra-retinal area, the sub-retinal area, and the sub-RPE. Examples of vitro-retinal interface includes vitro-macular traction. Areas of intra-retinal involvement includes Sister macular edema or CSME. Areas of subretinal includes coronal neovascular membranes, and the areas of sub RPE includes coronavirus or coronal melanomas. In the second part of the video, we'll be discussing vitreoretinal diseases.